In this example, we're going to look at the depreciation expense calculation for a non-current asset, in this case, a truck, which costs $65,000. Now, the purpose of depreciation is to allocate uh, the depreciable amount over the useful life. So there's some information that we have in here um, already, which will help us with that. So the first, obviously, is cost. The second item, or the second piece of information is the residual value. And this is what we expect the truck's value to be at the end of its useful life. So in this case, it's $15,000. It is a subjective number. The second piece of information, or the third piece of information we have is uh, useful life. And in this case, it's done in two ways. It's done in years, which is only five years. So obviously not that well made a truck um, or kilometers. So some sort of you know output method um, and in this case, that's 100,000 kilometers. The method for how we allocate, though, has not yet been determined. And that's actually up to the entity to be able to choose what they feel is the method which best reflects the way in which that particular asset is used. Uh, so there are a variety of different methods. In this particular example, we're going to look at two. The first is straight line, which is quite commonly used. And the second is units of production. The other piece of information we have, and we would obviously only know this as it goes through each year, so we've got all five years set out, is how many kilometers are driven in each year. Now, if you were to add those up, they do come out to 100,000 kilometers. Uh, reality would be that they would not exactly work out to be what you calculated as useful life. Um, in terms of how you deal with that from an accounting perspective, that's not particularly within the scope of this subject, um, but there are methods which get used uh, to deal with that problem where the estimate of useful life doesn't actually match up with what happens. So to move forward, the first method we're going to do is straight line. And in the straight line method, what we're actually working out is to allocate the depreciable amount evenly across each year. Now, firstly, what is the depreciable amount? The depreciable amount is the difference between cost and residual value. So if you imagine it times zero, so when you purchase the truck, it's worth or it's, I mean, it is worth $65,000, you expect it to be worth at the end of its useful life $15,000. And you're allocating that difference, the 50, in some fashion over its useful life. So that $50,000 needs to be allocated in some way, shape or form. In straight line, it's allocated equally across the number of years. So we take that 50,000, divide it by five, and we end up with $10,000 per year. And that is pretty much it. To see how this looks, the opening property plant and equipment would be the uh, would be the $65,000. The depreciation expense is going to be 10,000 and it's going to be 10,000 each year. And what property plant and equipment closes at or the truck closes at is the net uh, I suppose the opening amount less the depreciation expense gives you the closing amount. The opening amount the following year is based on the closing amount. Depreciation expense stays the same and this comes down. And we scroll that all the way through and what we end up with is a truck which is on the books at $15,000 at the end of year five which is its residual value. Now accumulated depreciation is a contra account which um, accumulates a depreciation expense. So it's, and we'll see the journal um, and the worksheet in just a few moments. So the accumulated depreciation is after the, after one year is obviously just a 10,000, but then it grows. So it accumulates all the depreciation expense for that asset so it moves from 10,000 to 50,000 by the end of year five. Once we've done straight line, we're now gonna look at units of production. So we're gonna have the same essential setup. Units of production. And it's gonna be the same depreciable amount because you're doing the same overarching thing, which is allocating the depreciable amount out across the, across the useful life. But in this case, the useful life is not time, it's 
some sort of output measure, in this case kilometers, which is kind of the production measure for a truck. So kilometers is 100,000. So we're allocating 50 cents per kilometer driven. This starts the same. The depreciation expense though works a little bit differently because it's the number of kilometers driven times by the depreciation expense per kilometer. So it's $6,000 for year one. Oops, don't want to do that. So we end up with 59,000 as a closing. In year two, it's the 15,000 kilometers times 50 cents per kilometer. And we take all of that and drag it down and we still end up with $15,000 as the closing balance for the net property plant and equipment. So we still end up in the same place, just a slightly different journey to get there. Accumulated depreciation works the same. First year, it's obviously just the first year expense. And then it just adds in each subsequent year to it. And again, we end up with $50,000 in accumulated depreciation. So just a quick walk through two different methods for depreciation expense calculations. Again, there are others, um, but that serves the purpose of what we're trying to get in today's example. When it comes to the worksheet effects, there are two transactions in this. The purchase of the property plant and equipment, we're gonna say it was for cash, so $65,000 in cash going out of the business and a $65,000 in cash asset coming into the business. Again, asset down, asset up, it all equals out. When we come to the depreciation expense transaction, or the adjustment, I should say, we have 65, sorry, not 65. We'll do 10 for, we'll use straight line and 10 here. Now, this accumulated depreciation, as I mentioned, is a contra, um, is a contra account. So it's a contra asset and it links with property, plant, and equipment but it has an opposite balance. So it's sort of, even though it's on the asset side, it actually does the opposite effect. So when that takes place, you're actually reducing assets. Um, so you, re you reduce the asset through depreciation, not directly in the asset account, but in the linked account accumulated depreciation. Depreciation expense is an equity item. Um, I mean, it's an expense element and that obviously has an impact ultimately on equity. And we're gonna keep this within equity just so we can use the negatives and it makes a little bit more conceptual sense here. Assets have a negative $10,000 effect. Liabilities in equity have a negative $10,000 effect. Everything balances. The other thing to also note is that at time of purchase, there is only asset effects here. There is no profit and loss effect. The profit and loss effect is driven by the depreciation expense. Um, so that is where the profit and loss effect turns up. So it's always a curious one when they talk about EBITDA, uh, so earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization, because yes, depreciation and amortization are non-cash expenses, but there is a good reason why they exist because without them, I mean, this purchase of property plan equipment ultimately will be a cost to the business. But if we don't include depreciation and amortization, that cost never really flows through into the profit and loss statement. So there is a good reason why depreciation exists, notwithstanding that it does, you know, there are some biases that potentially sort of creep in because of it. For those that are interested in the journal entries for this, we have a $65,000 asset being included. So debit 65,000 and we have cash going out. So it's a credit to that asset. Depreciation expense, when we have an expense, we debit it. 10,000 and accumulated depreciation 
as it's growing, it's a contra asset, which means it has a credit normal balance. So it grows, it increases with a credit, um, a credit entry. So we credit accumulated depreciation. And that is looking at how to calculate straight line depreciation, units of production depreciation, the worksheet effects, and the journal entries.